Hi guys, this is Nice Fish Wow. Welcome to my CKC 1.0 review. Um, this will be my initial review. I may have uh, updates coming up. So, as for this knife, um, the 1.0, let me just run through some of the specs of my knife. Um, it is in D2 steel, okay, and uh, it has a natural canvas micata. Uh, comes with a kydex sheath, um, 10 kydex in my case, and um, it has molly clips at the back, right? And uh, these molly clips are removable. Um, the screws are over here, as you can see, okay, and the rivets here. So you can unscrew them and remove them if you have no need for them. Um, the reason why I have these molly clips um, is because I attach them to my fishing sling bag. This knife, um, I have planned it uh, for utility around the house as well as um, my um, fishing utility knife. Okay, I'm going to show you um, how I attach let me just arrange the table. Um, this will be my fishing sling bag. It's a Maxpedition Sitka. And over here, uh, the big front pouch. Okay. Um, there are molly uh, attachments, right? So uh, you unclip this uh, thing okay they open like so and uh, each of these uh, clips will go through one hole okay and uh, I will lock them again it gets really tight so Right, so I have it on my pack and it's very secure and it doesn't move about. Right, because with this design, with two clips, um, it doesn't flap. Uh, this was uh, my idea because I uh, planned this knife to be um, on my Sitka. And this knife is about the length of the pouch itself. Okay. The actual bag is longer, as you can see. One smaller pouch, one bigger pouch in front. So this one sits here. So when, um, when a sitka is brought forward to my chest area, or uh, slightly below the chest, the knife is accessible this way. And I can just pull it out for use. Okay, when I'm done, I just need to slot it back and that's it. Okay, so I um, told Kylie to help me get these uh, clips, you know, um, yes, for this purpose. And initially, um, he was saying that one clip is enough, but um, when he tried it around um, uh, the belt, uh, you know, and vertical, like uh, or horizontal like that, it will flat. So now with two clips, you know, which was the original plan, it works um, really well. Okay, it's so secure. Right? I'm really happy with this. So I can bring this hiking, can bring this fishing, all attached to my pack. So let us uh, remove this. Okay. Right, so this is how the clip works. Okay, 
I believe this is from Blade Tech. Okay. So um, Kylie uh, really did a great job, you know, lining up the uh, rivets. You see, to they must be in line in order to attach these clips, and you know they, they he really did a great great job. So thanks Kylie for you know um, this for helping me and making this design um, uh, so great. Okay, and making this come to pass, you know, I'm really loving it. You know, it's going to be good for my Molly um, packs, you know. And uh, so, uh, we've covered the Molly. And uh, so, uh, let's go on to some of the um, finer details of this uh, knife. You know, just some... Uh, like this I have a glow pin over here and if you want to see how powerful this glow pin is let me just put it to the light one two three three seconds you can see the result All right uh, let me focus yep so it's a glow pin here okay and uh, I uh, I love the uh, size of the lanyard hole on the one one dot o. Um, it will accommodate uh, five fifty paracord easily. And um, uh, for my knife, I made sure that you know the scales are glued to the tang. Uh, that is because I'm using it around water, and I live in a tropical humid environment. And this knife um, can also get near uh, salt water. So, you know, if those uh, corrosive liquid uh, or moisture seep through, um, for my case, it's going to be pretty damaging to the knife, especially on long trips. So, um, I have them glued to the tank. Um, one more thing to... Um, uh, let's take a look at the knife, okay? Uh, one thing that you will notice by now is that this knife um, has a uh, rough finishing. Okay, when you get knives from Kylie, okay, um, unless you um, you know uh, his standard is you know to give good working knives, really excellent working knives, I would say, but uh, they come in. Uh, rough finishing like for example the spine you can see the water jet marks and it's for my case uh, the the tank is also uh, sloping okay uh, slightly sloping okay uh, and uh, Kylie did not um, uh, uh, smoothen this thing or rather grind it smooth and flat and left it like this but there is a purpose for this it is uh, so that you know I find that this this uh, water jet cutting texture that's left behind okay it's sort of like a light jimping you know providing a nice uh, that just a very light but nice friction and also this um, uh, angle this sloping uh, back spine serves as a good uh, scraper for me what am i scraping basically i'm using i can use this to scale my fish if i have to okay so it is really good and with uh, because the angle of the slope is also correct when i do a push cut like this it is also great okay um, i don't know how to explain it fully but trust me it's better than a horizontal flat spine so all these are just a uh, they have a you know he has a practical purpose for leaving it on um, so yes he you you won't expect you know you, you can't expect uh, when you get your knives from him to be uh, you know finished like a buck river or fall neven it's not going to work that way however um, you know because 
uh, for Kylie's case, when he, um, for the price that he charges for these knives, you know, uh, he doesn't make much of a profit, okay? And uh, so, basically, uh, he's just going to give you a great working knife, okay? Um, if you ask me, uh, I can really overlook all these things because what I want for me is a great user and a great well-designed knife. You know, many knives on the market, they just look great, you know, the finishing is great and excellent, but um, those knives, um, although they look great when it comes to actual use, you know, it's, it's just like a flower vase. You know, I, I don't want my knives to be a flower vase, a vase, you know. Um, so I want them to be, you know, you know, to have substance. And I find that Kylie's knives have this. Okay, before I divert too much, okay, let me, uh, uh, I've covered the rough finishing. Okay, and also let's go on to um, another point is that when I receive this knife, uh the the edge you know was very rough you know it was very toothy and uh, it seems like there are microchips and it seems quite bad uh, at, the, at the first from this area of uh, the tip okay to all the way to the very tip so this section here was especially bad so um, I was a bit uh, uh, disappointed okay um, however, uh, and uh, when I received, the tip wasn't uh, 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 needle sharp, you know, or bullet sharp. It was slightly, uh, very slight broken off at the top, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I was complaining, I was bitching a bit, but, you know, I, I was wondering how come this entire edge, you know, was so uh, rough. You know, and to the and it was especially bad in this area. Uh, however, I must say that even in that condition, it could shave hair, and it could cut uh, wood. You know, very well, like a chainsaw, I would say. However, it's just you know a very uh, toothy and rough edge. So, uh, when I emailed Kylie, he suggested to just. Uh, you know, to put it to the sandpaper. And uh, so I cleaned up the blade uh, on sandpaper. Okay, I used uh, 1000 grit and 2000 grit. And oh man, all I can say is, although this is D2, okay, it cleaned up really well. And with, with simple effort, I got the edge clean, as clean as any knives I've gotten them to be before, like my fall Nevens, like a brand new crease reef, uh, Sabenza, you know, right now, the blade on this D2 is as clean as those. No rough spots at all, just excellent. And with just uh, 1000 and 2000 grit sandpaper and some light sharpening I got it you know I just got it sharp you know and and clean so you know Kylie um, really got his um, uh, D2 um, uh, hardness correct and I'll cover that later so uh, it's just an excellent excellent um, uh, steel to work with, you know, and I could easily just uh, do some reprofiling uh, to get the tip uh, as sharp, a uh, needle sharp right now. I'm sure you can see how nice the tip is right now, you know, right? So, excellent, you know, and after I, I got this edge, you know, nice and clean, you know, there was really nothing left, you know, um, to to dislike about the knife. I was I was just overwhelmed, you know. I found this to be such an awesome, awesome knife. 
and um, let me just go on to say uh, my big four criteria for knives okay and how this uh, and whether this CKC uh, 1.0 uh, meets those criteria okay the big four criteria for knives for me okay number one is the ergonomics and I can tell you okay look at this knife simple design okay but I tell you this is absolute genius okay and the ergonomics of this handle okay is just heavenly uh, and this design handle design really will fit all hands okay large both large and small and this uh, you can see there is a small uh, guard and a choil, a tiny choil over here, right? And with this uh, tiny gut and choil design, it basically means um, that over here you have the full width of the spine, of, of the tank rather, okay? Acting like a gut, you know? So unlike Buck River, uh, like the Fox River and uh, quite a number of the other knives like the Highland Special, Woodland Special and all, they would have, uh, they would not have this this little guard and choil. You know, your hand, your fingers will, will move directly to this uh, edge of the blade. So it is very unsafe. Imagine if you do not have this part where, where your fingers would have a, a, a broad, uh, you know, uh, base to to stop. You know, so basically, you will never be exposed to any sharp edges. You know, the sharp edge of the blade. So, it's just a, a great feature. You know, a great design. And um, this knife has a a nice finger groove. Okay, and then you know, this. When the the beauty of it is that when you when you hold it and your index finger just fits into the the the, the groove, okay, there is indexing, okay, and at the same time you can see that uh the edge is very near to uh your 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 index finger, okay? And yet at the same time with this uh uh, guard and child design it is very safe for you the user so you're not going to cut your hands okay your fingers you know so and yet the the edge comes very close to you for detailed work excellent okay just just ingenious and um, um, the next thing okay First criteria, ergonomics. Second criteria, blade shape. He just nailed it. This, uh, if you notice, uh, this knife has a continuous edge. Okay. As you can see, it slopes, followed by the belly. So there's a continuous edge along this, you know, uh, entire blade and a continuous edge is always a great slicer and cutter you know whatever work you do with it a uh, continuous edge always excels and um, some of the fall nibbons have that and it's just an ingenious blade shape you know uh, an, an ingenious part of the blade shape uh, this knife has also a nice belly you know, I just love the belly on this. And, you know, a great tip, a nice strong tip as well. So, criteria two, blade shape. Okay. And uh, criteria three, uh, blade geometry and the edge geometry. Okay. Uh, this has a full height convex. And I tell you, you know, I can't really show you completely, you know, uh, on, on video. But I can tell you, 
Kylie's uh, blade geometry and the edge geometry, okay, is just excellent, you know, or rather perfect. He gets it perfect for the kind of steel being used. It's the best I've ever seen, okay? And, um, um, you know, uh, with the right blade geometry and edge geometry, it makes for, you know, just excellent cutting, slicing, and sharpening. You know, uh, when you get the edge geometry right, you know, even if it's D2 steel, you know, which is renowned to be uh, harder to sharpen, but coupled with the right uh, hardness, okay, which is in this case about 58 uh, HRC, and uh, the excellent edge geometry, I have already proven to myself, you know, and you can take it from me, that his D2 steel is so easy to sharpen, strop, and maintain. You know, the edge is very easy to maintain. And uh, number four, my criteria is steel choice. And I love, another reason why I love my uh, 1.0 so much is because uh, it is in D2 steel. And not just any D2 steel, but D2 steel heated, uh, uh, heat treated, you know, to uh, 58 uh, hardness, okay? And it is just excellent, you know? Uh, is you know the and this D two steel also uh, has excellent edge holding, um, which we will also see later when I do the um, do some cutting with it, and uh, although it's uh, pretty light cutting, but you know I've tested it and I can say that you know um, the edge holding you know at the moment okay to the kind of test that I put it through. Is just excellent and uh, uh, another thing about D2 is that it is corrosion resistant I think some of you have watched my videos about the uh, CKC Hunter and my issue with um, corrosion uh, the L6 steel just um, you know corrodes in an instant I would say but um, this D2 is completely different I did a 15 minute uh, acidic uh, fruit juice test. I put three drops, you know, on my D2, and every five minute interval, I would wipe off, you know, one spot. Uh, at a ten minute interval, wipe off another one. Fifteen minute interval, wipe off another one. So, um, even after fifteen minutes, the uh, 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 acidic fruit juice. Um, uh, from citrus fruit did not uh, uh, corrode the uh, D2 not even a patina was formed so for me that is good enough and it shows that this D2 is uh, suitable for the tropical humid environment and also add to that uh, unlike the L6 steel it doesn't impart you know uh, a metallic a strong metallic uh, flavor to uh, food so this is really suitable for food preparation and having said all these okay um, we will come to the test okay so I'll do some cut tests quickly okay um, I have uh, sharpened and stropped this previously so let's see how you know as you can see, you know, it just cuts paper effortlessly. I'm doing a slow cut, okay? Right, so um, this is going to be before I do my cut test, okay? So, uh, usually I use coconuts, okay? But this time, I bought this and I was thinking what should I cut up other than wood and the fruit that I've chosen this time is this this is called um, the pomelo 
okay and uh, uh, I chose this for two reasons first of all uh, Chinese New Year is around the corner and being Chinese um, uh, there is a custom you know uh, some Chinese people especially uh, those from the southern regions I believe or you know in at least in my area uh, which is um, in Southeast Asia this fruit is um, uh, uh, popular okay during uh, to, for the Chinese during Chinese New Year because there is a meaning a significance to it um, something auspicious I'm not too sure what is it but uh, this fruit is available right now. Second thing is that, you know, when I see this in a, in a fishnet, it just reminds me of uh, some of the images that Trader Joe's uh, uses. Uh, and sometimes maybe, you know, uh, yeah. So Trader Joe's, uh, fishnet, and uh, this is not Pamela Anderson, Pomelo Anderson. <laughs> okay, so... Um, uh, something unique about the pomelo is that I think it belongs to the citrus fruit family I think okay uh, however it is huge okay this is just a medium-sized one it gets bigger okay Joe don't have any uh, other thoughts to it um, and uh, uh, this fruit has very 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 thick skin and I'm going to show you I'm gonna smack it and you can hear the sound okay uh, you will see in a moment how thick the skin of this pomelo is okay and I'm gonna open this uh, pomelo using of course the CKC 1.0 and uh, fishnet comes off some people may get excited um, there is a thin urethane coating, uh, plastic cling film around it. Let's remove it. Uh, huh. Some sticker in the back. Let's remove it. All right, so I'm not an expert in opening this. Um, I don't open it much, you know. Hardly, maybe once a year or less, you know. So um, I'm going to decide how to open it. Uh, I think I'm going to just cut now over here. Chinese New Year special, okay? No coconuts, pomelo. As you can see, the skin is extremely thick. After taking off so much, it's still skin. Amazing. You know, I haven't even gotten to the um, meat yet. Okay, so what we usually do is when I was a young boy, I see them open it this way, I believe, you know, just cut like that. You can see that this knife, you know, the 1.0, just blazes through the thick thick skin you know uh, albeit spongy skin of the pomelo pomelo okay and uh, you know it's such a beefy knife but yet you know uh, because of the uh, full convex grind Convex being the best grind and the full height convex, you know, and just 
the uh, perfect, excellent uh, blade geometry or the grind, you know, it just is so good, you know, it, it just cuts, it just um, uh, cuts through, you know, this fruit, uh, the skin, you know, like butter. And there we go, you know, that's how thick the skin is, you know, no orange skin here, that's for sure, you know, and when, when we were young, uh, we like to, you know, when you open it in, in a certain way, you can, you can, this skin can be transformed into a helmet, you know. You can just wear it on a child's head. So I'm not going to um, expose it uh, fully, you know. I will save that to later. But, you know, I can just show you uh, how thick the skin of the Pamelo is. You know, meeting with some resistance here, fibers, the CKC 1.0 just slices through like butter. Okay, such a great, great utility blade when you have. You know, when the knife meets all my criteria. Well, here it is. You know, but underneath all these will be pulp like an orange. Okay. So I'm going to just put this aside. Excuse me. Okay, we're back. You know. And I'm just going to take one of these uh, thick skin uh, and show some more cutting, you know, with it. Thick pamelo skin, CKC 1.0. Just change source through it right and in the reverse uh, chest lever grip you know this knife just functions exceptionally well as well the ergonomics are not just for uh, this normal grip but in the reverse chest lever grip This works fantastic, you know. No, I don't plan to go to the hospital like Joe, but you know, just great. Do some uh, finer cutting. Excellent. Okay, and uh, what I'm gonna do now is to do some uh, wood cutting. Okay, bear in mind that um, I'm not in the best position to cut wood right now because you know I'm I'm sitting on a pretty high desk. Okay, and uh, I'm not in the best position, you know, to cut wood. But here we go. This piece of wood here is. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a dry mahogany wood, okay, and that means it is a pretty hard wood, I would say. Right? Um, pardon me, okay, allow me to stand up and do 
try to yep there we go just change songs through wood you know reverse chance lever You know, in all this time, you know, in this uh, power grip, okay, and even though my index finger seems very close to the blade, however, I feel just completely safe. You know, this knife doesn't move around in the hand, doesn't move around in the palm. You know, just excellent, you know. I just love this knife. And now, after all these wood cutting, okay, we're gonna cut paper again, okay. We cut the pomelo, which has some uh, uh, pulp juice, you know, and uh, we went on to cut some wood, okay. Let's uh, inspect the edge using the fingernail test. Let's run it. Still smooth, no sign of uh, not much sign of uh, any chipping or anything. Maybe uh, just one spot here, okay. Maybe something, uh, it can be due to um, you know, anyway. Now it's a bit sticky. But we're going to cut paper. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yep, there is a slight chip, I think, over here. Okay. Uh, you know, but it doesn't affect um, the utility and the use of the knife at all, you know. Yep. So even with this sticky blade, you know, two cuts paper, just one slight chip. For some reason, perfect. So, if you ask me, is this is a great knife. Okay, here's my summary of this. You know, it's really an extension of the hand. You know, it's extremely comfortable, even in hard use. Okay, and it was safe and secure in hard use. And, okay. Uh, this uh, knife really provides excellent control and it is just a beast of a knife, you know. Such a little powerhouse as you can see from the wood cutting. On a scale of 1 to 10, do I like this knife? Pretty long review, okay. I would say yes. It is 10 upon 10 for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. See you. You know, I just want to add two things. First, I inspected these uh, part of the blade where I said that, you know, I felt a uh, microchip, but I inspected it um, for quite a while. And I think, you know, um, there are some uh, micro rolls rather than chip, you know. I think. Uh, second point is that I said that when I first received this uh, knife, 
I just want to clarify that, you know, I said it was uh, rough, you know, and I think uh, it might be uh, due to uh, enormous burrs, you know, along this entire edge, and it cleaned up well. So after those cut tests, uh, yeah, uh, there are some spots along this blade. You know, I believe it's just some micro rows, but in any case, it doesn't really affect you know practical users much as a user of a knife. You know, so I'm really pleased with this knife. Thank you, Kylie. Uh, check out his knives, CKC knives, knives and stuff. Um, maker is Kylie Harris. Makes great blades. So yep, keep it, keep it up, Kylie. Awesome.